What is going on, everybody? Hello, hello. Welcome in to another Pixelogic stream. My name is Ian. Hopefully you guys can hear me pretty well. All right. Looks like it took a minute for me to connect, so hopefully there's not too much of a lag. How is everybody doing? All right. So just a real quick recap. This week's challenge for Pixo was subtractive sculpting, and a lot of us had done that. I did it last week on uh, where we were making this master sword. Let me get a better color so everybody can kind of see what's going on. Give me a better color. All right, so I was subtractive sculpting this master sword last week, all from a rectangle, essentially. Hey, what's going on? Hello, hello. Welcome in, guys, from Australia. Nice. What is up, Matt? Hello. So we are doing subtractive sculpting, and I got pretty far, but now I want to detail it. I want to clean it up. I want to get it looking better. So we are not going to be continuing the pure subtractiveness. Um, I found that it was actually pretty good for, like, conceptualizing in ZBrush. Just kind of, like, cutting away at stuff and seeing what you can get, but... At the end of the day, I also want to present something kind of nice. So I have a, a few ideas on what we're going to do, but yes. Uh, I'm going to also kind of load up. I have a concept that I kind of want to at least showcase. There we go. So how are you guys doing? So real quick, before we get started, though, let me just load up some stuff here real quick. All right, you guys can't see my um, you can't see my reference. I'm actually down a monitor this week. Usually, I have two monitors, but one of them took a took a coo pooper. So, <laughs> so we're down a monitor, which is totally fine. But I have a little concept that we're gonna be uh, kind of following that I sketched out, which is pretty cool. So, but before we get to it, just real quick, just want to say. If you guys are here for the first time, if you are new to either Twitch or YouTube, please do me a favor and for, uh, subscribe and follow so that way you know when everybody goes live. Because I'm not the only one here on Pixo, I'm actually one of many, and my name is Ian. Most people know me by Iris Sculpts, and I do toy statues, it's toys for 3D printing, just generic sculpting for the uh, 3D printing side, as well as for uh, toys. So, don't forget to subscribe, follow, all that good stuff. I'm also kind of feeling a little funky today, so don't mind me if I seem a little off. But, let's get to it! So this is what we did last week. Carved it all out, for the most part. Maybe, maybe cheated just a little bit here and there. But, uh, now we're going to clean it up and refine it a bit. What is up, TL101? How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good morning, Chan Alex. How you doing, DZ Lifestyle? Welcome in, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and just start kind of cleaning this up. It's weird being down a monitor. <laughs> just going to throw that out there real quick. So let me see if I can actually pull in an image so you guys can kind of see what I'm working on. Let me see here. Where's my pure ref? Nice. Australia, I'm Brazilian. Nice. Well, nice to have you here. Actually, I don't think I need to do that. I think I just need to go to... I think I have an image, actually. Let's see if I can load one up. I do. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and place an image down so you guys can kind of see what I'm working on. So this was the idea, in a nutshell. Have the Master Sword like such. So we'll kind of put that right above my head. Boop. And let's go to... Let's go to brush. Let's go to... I believe it is... Samples? Yeah, spotlight projection. You gotta turn that off. You gotta turn off spotlight projection if you're gonna use texture image as your reference. Not all the brushes work if you don't have that off. So, so there you go. Time from east, 8 o'clock. Nice, nice. So, so yeah. So, we're going to go ahead and start cleaning this up a little bit. But I also want to bring in a few other elements as well. 
So we're going to go ahead and do that. I want to sculpt the uh, princess, the silent princess, as well as a Korok creature. So, hello, hello, Ryan. How you doing? So, let's get into it. So, like I said, last week, for those of you who are new coming in, last week was subtractive sculpting. We took it as far as we could, but I really want to clean this up. I really want to make this look nice. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And also, too, please remember, you guys can ask questions, and I'll try to explain what I'm doing as I do it. But if you have any questions, please let me know, and I will answer them as best I can. So, first things first, let's actually build the Silent Princess. So I'm going to grab a sphere. And we're going to roughly scale this down a little bit. Do something like that. Oops. There we go. Let's go ahead and solve this out. Yoda was on the cover. Yes, it was. Yeah, that uh, Darth Grogu is one of my favorite projects I've done so far. The original concept artist was actually Max Davenport. He works for uh, Gearbox, Gearbox Games. And he let me sculpt his work. It was really amazing. Are you going to print this as a resin? More than likely, yes. That's actually the idea, to print it as a resin. And that's where the flower is going to kind of get a little tricky. Because we're going to want to make sure that the leaves are thick enough to actually... Give us some, you know, give us some wall thickness when we print it. But yeah, more than likely this will be small enough to want to, uh, to print a resin. FDM might be a little challenging without splitting it up too much. Hey, what's up, Louis? How you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing really well, man. Doing really well. I'm uh, just feeling a little under the weather today. But nothing too crazy. Okay. So we're going to make one petal first. And then we're going to use a ray mesh to get the rest. We're going to get a general idea of what this flower should look like. Kind of lift this side up. We're actually going to use the Move Infinite brush. And kind of scoop this up a little bit. So if you don't know the move infinite brush, which is B, M, and then N, actually what it will do is it will move everything that it sees through that viewport. So if I touch here and I lift this up, it's also going to touch that backside like that. So we kind of want to, it's a great brush. So if you just want to kind of like scoop things down or move it a little bit, it's a great brush for that. Happy Sunday, everyone! Hello, Casey. What printer do I use? I have an Epax X1 for my resin printer. It's a great printer. It's very equivalent to like a uh, Elgu Mars. All right, let's actually lower the topology a bit. Two is a little high. There we go. All right, so we kind of have a little bit of a. Uh, a petal here. We're not going to get it too crazy just yet. So let's go ahead. First, let's save it. And then let's use a ray mesh to actually get the, the flower petals. What we want to do. So go over to ray mesh. Turn on a ray mesh. We want to turn on transpose and also lock position. It's very important. Now what we're going to do is it looks like there's about five petals. So under repeat, we're going to hit five. And then we're going to go to rotate. And on the Y profile, we're actually going to rotate this 360 degrees, something like that. Now we're going to take our gizmo, turn off uh, symmetry, and we're actually going to go ahead and just move this around. And we can actually position this something like right about here. Boop. There we go. Good tips for someone brand new to digital sculpting. Uh, brand new to digital sculpting, depending on what you're trying to sculpt, of course, my number one tip is just get in there and just start playing around. Don't worry too much about producing the best thing possible. Just play around and just kind of see what you're, you know, what's working for you. But don't, don't worry too much about like, oh, this has to be perfect. Uh, 
you'll just kind of like you you'll just freeze yourself out there's no need to do that just get in there have some fun and then you know enjoy yourself play around see what works what doesn't if you have an idea of what you would like to do as far as like if you want to do character work you want to do hard surface you want to do you know uh props you know if you have a general idea try to focus it on that but really just take time play around see what each tools do um look at what other artists do use them as uh inspiration but don't compare yourself to what people like 10 plus years have done uh just enjoy yourself have fun Have I made a link? Um, I have not made a link to what printer I use. However, I do have a link to my socials and stuff. So you can go ahead and check me out there, which I will copy and paste right meow. I'm kind of iffy about getting resin printer. Have you had to cure the print and then and it can be a bit of a mess. Yeah, the printing, the, the cleanup process or the post-production process is definitely a little bit of a tedious approach. You, so you definitely do want to make sure that you really pay attention to, um, you know, pay attention to what you need. Get all the right tools. Don't skip out. You know, you're going to need isopropyl. You're going to need... Um, you know rinse tanks you're gonna want gloves you're gonna want safety glasses like there's a lot of things you definitely do want when you're getting into resin printing uh, that's why i do tell people if you're getting into printing brand new it's a lot easier to get into filament printing but at the end of the day you know if you want resin printing just make sure you really just do your research uh bro i'm late to the stream how do you do instance in zbrush Oh, you're not late to the stream. We just started. How did I instance in Zebra? What do you mean? No, nice to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you too, DJ. Okay, so we have these petals right here with a ray mesh. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and hit make mesh. So we have our petals here. And now we're going to go ahead. And I have a shortcut for auto groups. But if you want to do auto groups, go to poly groups and go to auto groups. That way we can just isolate each leaf if we need it or need it to be different like that it should be perfect all right now that we have that i want to make the actual I want to make the actual stem of the uh, silent princess so we could do that a bunch of ways but i find the easiest way is actually to go to insert and insert a z sphere let's actually turn off the main sword And we're actually going to go ahead and scale this down. So these spheres are amazing. Use W to kind of push this where we want it to be. There we go. Something like that. And we're going to look at the top. We're going to hit Q. We're going to drag out and hold Shift, which will snap. Which will have the Z sphere snap to the right position. Just like such. And then we'll go ahead and... Hit W again to move it. There we go. It's being a little funky. Yeah, now 3D color printing has been applied. Oh, yes, 3D printing, 3D color is... I need to get into that a little bit more. All right, let's scale this down a little bit. Something like such. Now I'm gonna hit Q and I'm actually gonna go ahead and touch one of the spheres on the inside. Let's turn off symmetry. Hit W again. We're just gonna kind of move that. This will allow us to create that stem. Man, you are fast. Love Z. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. Love Z spheres. Yeah, Z spheres are amazing. You can hit A as well, which will give you a preview of what you're looking at. And notice this Dynamesh right now. So your best thing to do is go to Adaptive Skin, take your Dynamesh resolution, knock that down to zero. So when you hit A, it actually is gonna show you a subdivided version instead of 
uh, a dynameshed version, which will be easier to manipulate later on. So I know that Hero Forge or someone similar do color 3D printing. I assume they use FDM. Uh, there's a lot more methods to the color printing. I would actually wouldn't be surprised. There's a company, I can't remember their name, but they do they do color printing as well. I think it's Memakai, Manakai. Anyway, they were actually at the Zebra Summit last year or the year before. Um, they do color printing, but it's more of like a UV. It's almost like a UV ink that like gets spread all across a platform, like supports and all. And then it comes through and cures it. And they have color variations. Very expensive machine. Um, I'll actually have to kind of see what... I'll have to get the name of that for you guys. But it's a really cool process. Okay. I'm also going to go ahead and just kind of use the Z-Sphere here too. Just kind of get that situated. Kamara! But, you know, Purza has a lot of... Um, color 3d printer options now so if you're looking to get into it it definitely is it is a lot more fun the only downside to fdm right now is that it is definitely slow but if you guys want to have like your socks blown um go to youtube and then type in like speedboat fdm printer like type in speedboat race like no benchy race type in the benchy boat race um people are printing benchies in like seven minutes with fdm which is <laughs> it's very amazing very impressive stuff i actually wish I had a little bit more finances for that thing it's pretty cool okay if you guys know me you know i love this freaking song hopefully it's not too loud all right so i'm just quickly like tapping with d and i'm getting just a little bit of a feel like that i'm gonna go ahead and hit a and then I'm going to hit make adaptive skin. Bloop. Oh, man, I might have done that like twice. I did do that twice. So now I have this right here. And we're going to go ahead and copy this and bring this in. So we're going to hide this original one. Hit paste. And actually, let's put things in a folder. So we'll call this the silent princess. And then let's organize this. We have our leaves. And then we're going to have our base stem. Just like that. Let's turn this guy on. And let's actually position where we want this. <laughs> Slow speed prints, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and hold this pizza box. And I'm going to select the leaves and the stem. And I'm actually going to go ahead and position this. Which side do we want this on? Where's the front? Front's back here. I'm going to scale this down. And we're going to set this over here. Like such. So we'll kind of put it behind a little bit. And we'll even... Maybe do something... Mm, kind of angle it a little bit. I'm going to want to see it. Are you using Spotlight for the image? I am. I am, yes. It's a great way to just kind of have quick reference. You could also use a plane if you wanted to as well. But that, yeah, that's what I use. Gotta move this percentage. There we go. I'm working with one monitor today. <laughs> Because my uh, my tablet kind of went a went a little kaput, so I have to have the chat like on the very very top of my monitor so I can see what you guys are saying. So I'm like having to constantly wiggle it. Yeah, and if you do the spotlight, by the way, when you have the spotlight right here, and you're using this as an image source, just make sure that you go to brush. Go to samples and hit spotlight projection. This is usually on. If this is on when you're working on it, a lot of times what will happen is um, your move brush, standard brush sometimes, it just won't won't do anything. Just kind of annoying. So Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit control shift D to duplicate the base stem. 
And what I'm going to do is actually come over here. And it looks like there's a nice little addition to this flower that I like. So we're going to go ahead and place the second stem right where we need it. And then we'll get rid of what we don't need. So we'll have it kind of grow out like that. So I'm actually going to isolate the groups that I need. Delete hidden. And then, of course, I'm going to go ahead and hit close holes. The iron. Close holes. There we go. Select this part. Kind of fade that out. And then we're just going to go ahead and start angling that down a little bit. I could have done that in Z-Sphere, absolutely. But, you know wasn't quite sure exactly how I wanted to do it, so. Oh, I have back face mask on. And we'll just end up merging that together when we need to do that. So the correct process is not to weld the petals by Dynamesh, correct? Um, so at the end of the day, you want to get the look of the, of the flower correct first before you start welding things together. But when you're using a ray mesh, and then you you uh, make you make mesh, yeah, you know if you're using subdivisions, don't dynamesh right away until you're ready to weld things together, because um, you may want to position these petals a little bit differently, or you may want to isolate one and manipulate it. So um, it's not necessarily the correct process of not dynameshing or choosing to do so. It just depends at what you want to do at the end of the day. I will be dynameshing the petals together once I know it's right where it's at as I prep to make things watertight for 3D printing. Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do is duplicate this one more time. I'm going to shrink these down because they're essentially everything I need it to be right here. And we're just going to put this in the middle. And let's turn the Master Sword off for a second so we can just get this where we need it to be. I'm not worried about scale right now. I'm just worried about the appeal. I can fix the scale after which. Is there a way to weld things together without having to Dynamesh? There absolutely is. And I will show you in one second. You can actually use Remesh by Union, which is one of my favorite ways to do that. So I'm going to hit Control w And then I'm going to go ahead and hold Control. Oh, this has subdivisions. Delete higher. I hold Control and actually start creating duplicates. And I guess it doesn't really matter how many are here. I'm just going to go ahead and hold Control a few times and create some duplicates of this uh, inside. So if anybody is ever curious on like, if you, a screen tablet kind of like changes your workflow a little bit versus a normal tablet, I'm back on a normal tablet for right now I'm, as I save up for a Cintiq. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it is a little weird not looking down, I'm not gonna lie. I'm so used to that process, it's not even funny. Okay. So we got these right here. Uh, let's make it an odd number, much like we have the uh, the 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 petals themselves. I keep wanting to call this flower a lily because that's what it reminds me of, but I know that's not right. I don't know why. It's it's a very funky thing. All right, let's hit auto groups. There we go. Okay, so let's let's say we want to weld this part of the stem to this part here together. So this is the way you would actually want to weld things together. Uh, so the first thing to do is actually merge them down. So let's save it real quick because, you know, life happens and so do crashes. And let's actually delete this thing here. We don't need that. Don't need that. All right. So let's go ahead. Oh. All right, let's go ahead and merge these two down from each other. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and go to Subtool, Merge Down, say yep. Now, generally, we wanna make sure that these two objects are different polygroups. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Auto Groups. And you generally also want them to be the same subdivision if possible. Luckily for us, because it's an exact duplicate of what we have, it is. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that this is embedded inside of the flower that we want to weld it to. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to turn off symmetry, hold alt, and send this to the middle. Kind of send this to the middle of the, uh, of the object itself. I'm going to hit this cog wheel and I'm going to go remesh by union. What that's going to do is actually stitch this together. And it's, and it's, you know, you, you don't want to do this with active sub, uh, subdivisions. So you definitely want to do this with uh, like the lowest subdivisions you can. And we want this to get welded. What you're also going to want to do is now that we've done the remesh by union, we are going to want to kind of clean this up a little bit. So what we can do is take like the standard brush, come up and turn on Sculpt uh, Sculptors Pro. And if we go to Stroke Sculptors Pro, we can actually turn off Adapted Size if we don't want to have it vary. And we can scale that down a little bit. And all we're gonna do is kind of just paint over where they collide, just like such. And this will make sure that there's enough geometry there so when we go ahead and Z remesh one more time that it's gonna make it a nice watertight object. Something like that. Perfect. All right, now that we have that, we're just gonna go to geometry, Z remesher. You can keep groups if you want, it's up to you. I like to turn adapt off and go ahead and hit Z remesh. And now you can see that this is actually welded together and the geometry itself is pretty good. We can actually maybe take that down a little bit. Let's go to two, there we go. So now this is welded together. This is, this is, one, this is one piece. We turn on double, you can see the inside of the object. And that is that was how you would weld it using uh, uh, remesh by union. Uh, oh no! What happened to the XP pen? Uh, what happened to the XP pen was I was trying to uh, I was at work trying to use another program, and it kept crashing the program. Then I found out that the drivers were conflicting. Um, I reached out to them, but you know, such is life. So I just switched out to a basic Wacom tablet um, until I can find find a replacement. Is this a fictitious flower or does your species actually, or does the species actually exist in the region of the country? What would the name of this flower? Um, so I don't, I'm not sure if it's based on a real flower. It's the silent princess from Breath of the Wild. So not quite sure hundred percent if it is a fictitious flower or not i'm sure it's fake but it definitely resembles flowers i've seen before so asian dp art artist interesting okay i'm gonna go ahead and actually make this a little skinny so I'm gonna take the deformation inflate and actually drop it down a little bit. Now I'm gonna smooth this out. Relax smooth by holding shift, start smoothing and let go. So kind of relax smooth it. I also turned uh, Sculptress off at this point. There we go. So hopefully that answered your question, by the way, about the merge. Let's go here. Let's shrink these down as well. Just a little bit. Now I have different, I want to actually move these individually. I'm going to hit D so that we have uh, dynamic 
subdivisions on. But I'm going to come up to brush and I'm going to go to auto masking and I'm going to turn on topological. What topological will do is allow me even with a huge brush with the move to actually move only the poly group that I select. So I can grab this and literally move it all over the place and it will just move that one poly group. And if I stop and start moving something else, it'll just move that one poly group. This way, I can go ahead and kind of come here and manipulate these exactly as I want them to be. Are you newer to the channel? I am. I've been streaming for Pixo for about two months now. I was once asked about the artist Hazian. I know the numbers are very well, but I can't I can't carve a character. Interesting. I would have to Google it to see what it is. It's similar to the wild blue heart tulip. Oh, nice. That's very cool. Here, let me see. Scan deep, deep art. Artist? Yeah, I'm not sure. IBM motion. Oh, yeah. Okay, I read that. Yeah, I actually just... there's The flower is so detailed in the game. So there's a lot of things I can do with it. Now, we do want to keep in mind, if we are going to be printing this, by the way, that we set ourselves up for success by getting things as close to each other as possible, because wall thickness is a huge thing when 3D printing. And we'd want to make sure that they actually print. And these would be pretty skinny, almost as skinny as supports. So we're going to want to be careful to make sure that we don't, like make them too thin because then they'll just snap off and we don't want that i'm also going to turn on back base with move that will allow you to kind of grab and pull away from a wall and get that kind of merged in together like such i'm oh, sorry you meant sculpting i know the numbers are very well oh but you can't sculpt the character um but I'm not sure I understand what you're what you're asking, IBM Motion. Are you saying you're having troubles like following a concept? I go to brush real quick. And let's turn topological off. Now I can move everything together again. I'm gonna hold relax smooth and kind of get that going just like that again. Here we go. Turns out my XP pen's hotkeys are less useful than I thought they would be, so now I'm using the keyboard finally. Yeah, I stick with the keyboard 100%. Like, it's just something that I do. Um, keyboard is, I don't know, it's like, makes the most sense. <laughs> uh, do I use substance for texturing or strictly ZBrush? Um, if I am doing something like this where this is purely high res, this is a high res sculpt meaning I'm gonna 3D print all the details. Um, I just, I stick in ZBrush. Now, if I was doing something for like games and such or animation, um, then that's another that's another topic. But even, even still, all the textures can be done strictly in ZBrush. You can get a really high resolution and then you can use the ZBrush sculpt to bake some of your maps as well. So it just depends on the project, but for 3D printing, only use ZBrush. Thoughts on Space Mouse? I want one, so then I can actually have more legitimate thoughts. <laughs> okay, what I'm gonna do now is actually create a, a kind of a bulb a little bit, and then we'll create some leaves here to attach, which will be good. So let's save this and let's continue creating what we need to create. Uh, when you finish all the modeling, will you will your work be at the color level or will you explore the materials in depth? I notice in SSS in the flower. 
Um, I'm going to definitely, once I block it out, start playing with colors and materials. I mean, before with my walking pen tablet, the shift control alt and the scroll was wheel was useful. Ah, they, yeah, I don't use any of that stuff. There's a bunch of buttons here. I just, I never use them. I'm always keyboard. I'm weird that way. Um, did I print the, a, hold on, boop. Hey, and did you print the rune already? Uh, you go to me to watch it again, and I'm definitely gonna do the Kakaguri sculpt now. Nice! Sparks, nice. Um, I haven't yet. I actually need to order more resin. I've been doing just client work for the last two weeks, so I've just been swamped and completely just tired. <laughs> so, I need to get back on that. Um, I have one... I have one by Wacom Tablet with 2048 pressure, sen pressure sensitivity levels. Don't know how hard I should press to get 100% strokes in ZBrush. Um, it, how firm your your Wacom tablet is in ZBrush is completely dependent on you. I have mine set pretty high. My my the the pen pressure is set to firm, which is pretty pretty solid actually. So, um, yeah. Okay. It just, it just greatly depends on how hard you press. If you find out that you press pretty hard, then maybe, you know, maybe set the firmness up a little bit so that, it, that you don't, you're not always at 100%. But just kind of play around with it and see what feels right, you know. Have the, have the settings on the side, start adjusting those, go in ZBrush, make a few strokes, make some movements, see if that feels good. It's kind of a back and forth, very custom thing. Okay, we're going to do real quick and start making the bulb. So we're going to go to transform, symmetry, radial symmetry. And I'm going to turn this on to four. But I'm going to turn it on four on the Y axis. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to start making the, the kind of bulbish shape that I want. Something like such. Kind of pull this out a little bit. Actually, let's maybe go a little bit more. Let's try eight. Let's back this up a bit. Like such. There we go. There we go. Something like that. Uh, let's see here. What is the intended scale of this when you print it? Enjoy the stream. Keep it up. Thanks, Garage Man. Uh, the intended scale in my head is probably about seven and a half inches or give or take a few i don't have a official number just yet i have pretty small printers so i i'm thinking maybe something like that but scale can definitely be whatever you need it to be at the end of the day we just got to make sure that we keep wall thickness in mind not a problem. Absolutely. Hold on one second. I'm gonna do 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 do. What did I do with my XP pen? Um, what I did with it was set it down on the floor next to me, where I can probably kick it right now if I'm not paying attention. <laughs> okay. Now I'm gonna try something a little bit different. We're gonna go five on the radio, and we're gonna make some leaves. Let's see. Um. Did the tablet surface scratches when you sculpt? Yeah, it kind of does. If you let your, if you let the nib or the little pen tip go too long, it definitely will start scratching. That's on any tablet though. Yeah, not just screen. Um, if you're going to do maps, do you like ZBrush, UV Painter, Maya, 3ds Max, or stuff like that? Um, if I do maps, I'll choose another program typically. But I have used ZBrush's uh, map multi-map exporter it does pretty it does pretty well actually like this does really really well you have up to 4k that you can use and you can actually export a good chunk of your maps you have a bunch of options um but generally for when i do client work and i need uh i need maps i generally will use another program never under you never understood the difference between insert and append so insert what insert will do is it'll actually just insert 
right below your current uh, your current list where append will actually drop it all the way at the bottom. So if you're hovering over this right here and you insert, it'll actually insert the subtool directly underneath. Append, it always kicks it down at the very bottom of the list. And insert also selects that one. Uh, append, append does not, if I right? Yeah, append doesn't. Append just drops it on the list, but it doesn't actually select it. So if you know you're going to be doing stuff and you want to quickly just drop in some spheres, but you don't you don't want to work with them just th that second, that's what append will be for. Um, generally, you you develop your work style around append or or insert. I generally hit insert because if I'm ready to do something, I will be popping that in right then and there at that moment. So. that one second um let's see i'm working in zbrush and i know every setting about program but i don't work good sculpting character do you understand um it's okay if i understand you right ibm motion it sounds like you're just having a hard time sculpting in general and if you are for character sculpting the biggest advice i can give you is Definitely focus on anatomy. Um, you can't do any type of character work without the basic understanding of anatomy. So stylized sculpting, you know, a lot of people sometimes start off with really cartoony styles, but that's not necessarily a good thing because there's a lot of cheated anatomy. And if you don't understand the basic idea of it, you could have a hard time figuring out where to place things. Um, take Funko Pop, for example, very simple anatomy, but you know, at the same time, because the style is so simple, it could throw people for a loop. So focusing on anatomy of anything you're trying to do, like everything has anatomy from a tripod to a tree, to a person, to an animal, to your cup on the desk, like everything has a structure and a foundation in which it's built on. And that's anatomy. So really just focus on learning anatomy, at least get the basic stuff on where things are supposed to be and volume and proportion of that anatomy. And that, that will help you out a lot more. Um, it just takes time and practice, of course, which I know is like an easy thing to say, but trust me when I say it, it very much is. So hopefully if I understand. Okay. What we're gonna do now is I'm actually gonna use the, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna use the mass pen and I'm gonna make some leaves now. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and start painting some leaves that we're gonna use for this pad right here. And notice I'm using radial symmetry. I'm gonna sharpen that. I want a kind of asymmetrical feel to each one, but I want them to be fairly identical to themselves. I'm gonna hold Control Alt and tap to sharpen that. Clean that up. Now I'm gonna go to Subtool, Extract. It's kind of hard to see right here. Extract. I'm gonna change this to zero thickness because this will give me a single-sided geometry. I'm going to hit extract and then hit accept. And that's going to give me this right here. And then what I'm going to do is actually clear that mask. I'm going to go to masking and select border. Mask by feature. Turn that around and soften it just a little bit. And then I'm going to go to deformation and polish by feature, which will give me a sharper, cleaner edge. Just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit auto groups. And now I'm gonna go ahead and lower the resolution a little bit to like, a, let's say a two, keep groups. Actually, maybe not, this is actually pretty low. Let's see here, turn off symmetry, let's try that. There we go. Turn radial back on. Now we have this. 
Let's see. Um, so what are you using now? Did you get a Wacom? I did not get the Wacom I wanted yet. I borrowed a Wacom from a buddy of mine who had an extra one laying around the house. Must be nice, right? <laughs> uh, mine is life-size. And to place in the middle of an office building in the day or night. In the dead of night. So we got there by magic and set it up and inquire the background. And some spotlights as part of the library prank. That's funny. <laughs> thanks, no problem. Thank you for answering my question. Of course, absolutely. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. Do I always have to learn anatomy in order to develop my skills? Yes. Yeah, the short answer is yes. You would. You're always gonna want to. You're always gonna want to develop anatomy um, and really get it looking. Like, I guess the easiest way to say this is anatomy is a life journey. It's not something that is going to just miraculously, like, you know, uh, there's always something to improve. How can I, how can I put it that way? It's something that you don't need to rush to learn a lot of it at once. Anatomy could always and forever be something that you strive to get better at, but you don't have to sit there and say, I need to learn every single thing right now. Like, I still study anatomy to this day. I've been sculpting for five years. There's always something to improve on. But, you know, I know what it is that I'm actually, uh, I know what it is that I'm trying to achieve, and that's the important part. So, so yes, you are going to want to keep learning it. No, don't have to fret on it. I'm also trying to think of how I want to do this. I'm actually going to apply this geometry. I'm going to try to inflate this together. There we go. You just keep working on it. And just know, too, a big tip that um, I think really helped me out in the beginning of my sculpting days, uh, like first year, Somebody sat down and told me, don't rush your projects. There's no need to sit there and try to get it all done in 30 minutes to an hour. You know, there's a lot to it and layering your projects, making sure that there's like contrast, depth, um, you know, taking the time to add the detail, you know, especially in the beginning, don't worry about being fast. Like, that's not going to help you. Just worry about focusing on the project and does it look like how you want it to look? And then, you know, don't be afraid to call something done. Even if you sit there and you notice that there's so much to it that you would like to, quote, fix. Don't worry about that. Like, at the end of the day, have fun with it. And, you know... If it didn't turn out exactly as you want it to, but you kind of know what you did wrong, or somebody gives you some advice, go ahead and just take that advice and apply it to your next project. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of smooth this down a little bit. So kind of a little bit of a bulb. We're gonna make sure that this bulb is like not quite um, not quite uh so where i'm looking for uh you know not quite bloomed yet so we'll do a little bit of layering like that let's see um uh, let's see you can't make a car if you don't know how a car works and how it looks it's the same for characters exactly absolutely how oh, nice what do you think about it um i think it's pretty cool chris yeah yeah, actually, I find, <laughs> surprisingly, like, this, uh, it's an Intuos tablet I'm currently using. It feels a lot smoother than my XP pen did. So, yeah, pretty pretty happy with it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and re Z remesh this. Oh, yeah, head symmetry turned on. Let's turn that off. Um, so I'm subdividing again. I'm dropping it down pretty low. So that way I can get it a lot smoother. 
because the lower your subdivisions, the cleaner you can get your model to look. But the less, the least amount of detail you can slam in there. So, if you want to have a nice, clean sculpt, um, you know, go really low on the subdivision until you're absolutely ready for detail. Something like that. There we go. Let's go here real quick. And we're just going to kind of pull that in. Let's push that in just a little bit. So I'm keeping this inside on purpose because they're going to intersect with each other and make it that make it watertight. So that's kind of what we want. All right, now we're going to go ahead and turn off symmetry. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the the gizmo, turn on the pizza box, and deselect everything, and just select what I want to move. And now we're going to position this into place. Something like that. Anatomy is the base of any organic sculpt. Yeah. I, I would say, I would add that it's the base of any sculpture, period. Even hard surface. You know, if you look at something, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, uh, design and purpose in everything. You know, you guys should look up, uh, if you're, especially if you're already on the ZBrush YouTube, go through some of the past videos. They did this video collaboration with Disney. I believe it was Disney. Maybe it was Pixar, but it was actually talking about uh, Zootopia and it was talking about how the, the character designers and the environment designers were actually trying to figure out how to incorporate design. And if you take a look at a leaf, for example, the way the leaf um, veins go is the same, like the shape of the veins in the leaf is the same shape as the trunk which is the same shape as the branches like and so they utilize that anatomy in the design of one flower or one tree and had to repeat it and then they use that for the full environment so there's definitely purpose in design especially if you're looking at uh hard surface like take a look at modern clean um surface like uh just look at architecture you can see so much design and anatomy built into how how it looks. So there's definitely a lot there. Okay, I'm gonna use inflate and actually kind of skinny this up a little bit more. Something like that. So let's go ahead and hit save. Uh let's see. Mm, taking advantage of this of the procedure of yours when placing the petals on the surface of another object below. Is there no collision tool in ZBrush for that moment? Um, do you mean as as they're kind of intersecting on top of each other? No, just make sure that the sub tool is is embedded in the um, in the object. Hey, what's happening? What's going on, Interman Arts? Lovely stream. Thank you so much. I'm more of a programmer than a 3D artist, but I enjoy doing both. If I want to make a portfolio of it, as a technical artist, I'll be enough it will be enough uh there it'll if there are only matte cap no texture and put them on art station um if that's a question yeah just you know think of it as more like uh presentation is key make it just look appealing it doesn't always have to be super fancy it just has to look good and if it's in your portfolio it'll be it'll be perfect because I suck at texture painting, my PC doesn't support Southern Painter. So yeah, I mean, just make it look really, really good. What you could do too is um, if you go to, you know, go to render, go to preview AO and turn this bad boy on, say like 25 intensity. Like if we come here, turn everything back on. Like with preview AO, put that there for a second. Here's preview AO off, looks pretty flat. Put it on and it'll help with the depth a bit. So, you know, I, I would say do something more like that. Um, 
but if you can if you can put some sort of texture on it even in zbrush it's definitely better than nothing but work with what you got of course you know at the end of the day if your machine can't handle it then don't worry too much eventually just try to upgrade when you can that, that's really all you can do right okay hey what's up Talden? how you doing is this a commission or just for you? Uh, so most of the Pixo streams that I do, in fact, almost 99.99999% of Pixo streams are going to be just personal stuff. I don't usually show any of the work uh, without special permission. And so, yeah. I realize I'm going to break this up for a second. I also can't spell Master Sword, so I fail. It's not an I, it's an O. <laughs> I actually want to break this up real quick. So I'm going to kind of select this section right here. Control W to polygroup. And I'm actually going to split hidden. And we're going to go ahead and close holes. Because, uh, yeah, we need to definitely make this look a little bit better. holes there we go so we'll end up making this look better we'll make that two pieces plus now i'm thinking about printing and i'm going to want to split the base up with the with the actual sword itself let's see our uh, our panel loops the best method for hard surface i would say definitely worth learning panel loops if you're trying to focus on hard surface i'm not much of a hard surface sculptor myself so I can attest to what um, a really good hard surface sculptor would use. But when I do use, when I do hard surface in ZBrush, I definitely rely on them a lot. So it's worth it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to save this one more time and then we're going to add a few more leaves and then we're going to build our Korok body because I want a Korok peeking his head around the sword. I thought it'd be adorable. <laughs> uh, Z modeler for sure. Yeah, both. I would say Z modeler, panel loops, and thick skin. And here's why I say thick skin. I'm going to go to Z sphere real quick. I'm going to make polymesh 3D. All right, I'm going to subdivide a few times. So check this out. This is like the coolest thing on the planet. And I did this a lot with my Darth Grogu, the lightsaber blade. I did this specifically. I went to thick skin and I found a thickness that I really, really liked. And then I painted a stroke. Okay, let's go a little thicker than that. Let's do that. I painted a stroke. Then I hit one a bunch. And you get a really nice flat surface. So if you have, so if you really want to like have some fun, like start drawing, hold shift, snap, and then hit one a bunch, you can get some pretty nice shapes. I'm definitely not saying use it for everything, but if you're in Dynamesh a lot, you know, use Lazy Mouse, snap, hit one a bunch, which repeats the stroke, and you can see here, just just by doing that, you can get some pretty cool stuff. Even minus, bond them. I'm gonna come here, start, hold shift minus, come in, oops. Like such, then hit one a bunch of times. So you can get some really cool stuff when you're conceptualizing your hard surface, but panel loops is definitely gonna save your life and so will um, C modeler. So definitely think it's worth worth doing. You are to be congratulated. This flower really is too complex. <laughs> hey, what's up, Slump? How you doing? Okay, let's go ahead and add a few more leaves. So let's turn off the Master Sword real quick. Let's add a few more leaves. Uh, we're just going to sculpt one. So let's go ahead and... Here's that bulb. Let's put that in there. And actually, you know what we're going to do? Let's go ahead and merge this down. Say okay. And then let's rename this... Um, uh, SP for Silent Princess bulb because it's not it hasn't bloomed yet. 
That's my excuse. And then let's go back to Z-Sphere. And let's actually... Let's sculpt a... We can use just a kind of a generic leaf. We don't have to go too, too crazy too quick. I'm gonna hit X for symmetry. And let's, let's kind of manipulate this a little bit more. Uh, let's see. Sandman 5000! Love that name, by the way. What is the best method to make a mesh out of a vector SVG logo? For the best quality with text and basic images. I want to make like a class ring with writing. Any help is appreciated. That, A, sounds like really, really awesome. Um, what I would recommend doing is coming down to Z plugin and going into 3D text and you can actually load in new SVG. So if you use another program like Illustrator, create your SVG, and then come in here and you can load that. But I would definitely recommend following Thomas. He sculpts on Mondays, so tomorrow, but he sculpts in the evening, I think around 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, or it's daylight now, Pacific Daylight Time. Um, definitely check him out because he does a lot of jewelry and I don't do that much jewelry, so I don't do that much wrapping around objects in ZBrush but he would for sure. So huge shout out to him. I would check him out tomorrow around this time, maybe like another hour from now. He would definitely give you more uh, insight into that. But I do know that you can come in here, you can load in your shapes, um, and then you could play a lot, a lot with uh, 3D text. I also know if you go to Pixelogic on YouTube and type in, you know, 3D, like text 3D, like ask, ask ZBrush text 3D, that could definitely get you a lot closer, but that would be the best way to load in an SVG for sure. But check him out. Hello, is it possible to make sure 3D printing models have no errors in ZBrush or do you have to check a net fabric mesh mixture? There is, Ian, also awesome name. Um, there is absolutely a way to do that. So what you could do is, let's come here to this guy. So let's say we go ahead and duplicate this. We have this side by side each other like such. Yay, we love it. It's awesome. We're going to go ahead and merge down, say good. I take a second. Just merge 2 million like it was nothing. And then let's go ahead and Dynamesh at 500. Say no, don't freeze it. There we go. Okay. So we Dynamesh this guy, and it should be watertight, right? That's kind of that's kind of what we are looking to do. Oop. And so we can go ahead and we can check two ways. We want to check to make sure something is good. First thing is come down to uh, Display Properties, turn on Double. Once you've Dynamesh something together, go ahead and actually select the inside. And you can take a look yourself and kind of see if there's any errors with inside the model. And then you can actually kind of delete some of those if they are. The more technical way of doing it is once everything's the way you like it, come up here to transform and there is an analyze select the sub tool. And if you click that, it'll give you a scale reference. You go ahead and pick the one you want and then it will tell you if your sub tool is watertight. And if it is not watertight, if it says not watertight, which happens from time to time, then just go to geometry, modify topology, go to weld points and close holes. Go back to transform and click it, pick your size, and then it will say at the top whether or not it would be watertight. Um, sometimes I've had that not be 100% accurate, or it will say it's not watertight if you're, if you're, um, if you're, like, let's say your polygons are folding on themselves. So, um, I've brought in models that said it's not watertight and it worked fine. There was no issues, but I would say if you wanted to make sure 100%, this is the method I'd follow. Not a problem, Ian. Absolutely. That Vegeta head. Yeah. That's actually uh, that's a huge work in progress. I gotta get him printed out uh, 
a little bit more. I've articulated Vegeta. Pan it works via FTM. I've been trying to get that project working well articulated in resin, but um, I don't have time right now. <laughs> it's mind blowing how much how ZBrush works with high poly mesh. I know it's totally black magic. Um, that's what I tell everybody. It's really just black magic. Oop, let's delete that. All right, let's go back here. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of use the damn standard a bit just to kind of cut this down a bit. Do I have thick skin on? Nope, good, okay. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is actually just go ahead and dynamesh it. So hopefully that was helpful, guys. Let me know. But yeah. There's definitely a lot of ways you can you can utilize to get things watertight. So we're gonna go ahead and actually use that move infinite brush again. Just to get a little bit of that kind of flare and shape. I am definitely going with a little bit more of a generic leaf for now. I might try to find some reference here in a little bit. Let's get the damn standard. I mean, sorry, not the damn standard. Let's get the transpose. And then I'm going to hold alt. And I'm actually going to go ahead and kind of bend this up. It's a really great trick. If you are trying to get some sort of curve to your shape, just holding Alt to draw out, hold Alt, hover over this white box, and then you can use, it's like a deformer within the transpose tool. It's really cool. Hit Y again, gizmo, set that to the center, and you're good to go. That's how I do most of my tongues as well, which just kind of looks like right now. What I'm gonna use is the snake hook brush here in a second. To give it almost kind of like a little bit of a, a little bit of like a spiky feel to it. Do you recommend anyone to watch to learn panel loops? Absolutely, yeah, do it. Cause you can use panel loops a lot. You know, it's not specific to hard surface, but it can't hurt. I don't use it as often um, but I have used it from time to time. And I think, uh, Michael Palfovich has some great tutorials on panel loops, not only on his channel, but also on pixel logic, I think. So definitely check it out. He he's used it quite a bit. But yeah, I definitely recommend. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and actually hit five and we're going to Z remesh it and get some Something a little bit lower res. It's like a million. Um, have you? Uh, I've watched some of Michael Pavlovich, but he is wins as far as to it down to somebody in my level. Yeah, he's a, he's a fast guy. He's awesome. All right, so give me a second, and I'll kind of do my best to run through panel loops just a just a little bit, but. I'm I'm not an expert, but we can play around a bit with it. Panel loops aren't my 100% forte, but if you guys don't mind watching me bumble around, I'll bumble around. We can we can figure some stuff out. Okay. All right. Only your brief can change. Your, only your belief can change your level. Absolutely, yeah. Just try it. I mean, that's my method. That's that's literally my answer to everything. Try it, see what happens. That's how I learn. I'm sure a lot of you learn the same way. But, and so we'll do that. Like, like I said, I'm not an expert on panel loops, but I'll definitely jump in there, try to utilize it real quick. Um, and let's see what we can create. Maybe that'll kind of help. And then what, what I will promise by next Sunday, okay? So I'm giving myself some homework, but I'll definitely study up on some panel loops. 
and then I'll bring that to the table. All right, let's get this going. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and we created our leaf. There we go. <laughs> Please don't worry about it. I was just wondering, I appreciate it. No, absolutely. Are you kidding? Trust me. My goal as an artist uh, is to learn as much about ZBrush as I possibly can. And if it helps you guys, it's going to help me too. You know what I mean? Like, I enjoy this stuff so much. It's, uh, it's what I do. <laughs> yeah, get it done the way you know how. If you come across a new tool or opportunity to try a new method, take the time to experiment. Absolutely. Yep. You guys have seen me experiment a lot um, already in just the last few months because it's just something that I just kind of do naturally and if you guys have joined me on my own personal streams which happens once a week now due to being extremely busy um you guys know i just kind of like come in there and just start like hey let's try this we'll see what happens <laughs> there we go yep absolutely But yeah. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and clear that mask and I'm going to go ahead and hit auto groups. And I'm actually going to go ahead and hold control and duplicate this process here. So we can just bring down what we've worked on already. Okay. I'm going to hit auto groups one more time. And I'm going to go ahead and actually delete hidden on one of those leaves. We don't need it. Isolate this guy. I'm going to go ahead and kind of push this more like here. I'm going to just go ahead and mask off this area. There we go. Oops. Maybe rotate it. So looking for a peel at this point. I want to see what it looks like from afar, 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 and see if it's something that interests me in any way, shape, or form. So if we look at it from back here, let's turn everything on. Does this look good at the end of the day? And not too shabby. Let's go ahead and isolate this. And we're going to do the same exact thing, but now we're going to... I'm going to go ahead and actually control this here. Yeah, let's con no, let's not do that. Let's actually hold the gizmo, select that one, and then control drag as well. Because we're going to make the... We're just repurposing at this point. I came to the conclusion that box modeling hair is going to be easier than trying to sculpt and retopo it. Uh, it depends on the style that you want to do, but yeah, if it works, absolutely. Yeah, There's nothing wrong with nothing wrong with box modeling hair. What you might want to do in ZBrush is if you if you hit B and C, they now have curve flat snap and curve flat brushes which you could probably use this now to get a bunch of hair as quickly as possible they're more you might be able to use them more for like hair cards but you know at the end of the day it might that might work for you give that a shot um, I've also also used fiber mesh before as well just created a really thick card 
and then made like little cubes and stuff out of it and then if I wanted each individual strand that's kind of a pain in the butt approach please tell me how you change the the figure like Vegeta Yo, oh, you mean the uh, the cam view this guy right here yeah absolutely I can demonstrate it I can also link you to um, a YouTube video that I created that will kind of showcase that a little bit more Okay, I'm gonna hit auto groups real quick. Let me just finish this thought. Let's grab that. Let's go here. I'm actually gonna solo this. And the cool thing is we can actually just kind of hide that temporarily. Let's do that real quick. Let's hide that real quick. I'm gonna rotate that around. So you guys see it's a lot of repetitive, uh, just kind of create one tool that you really like and then repurpose that. So that way you don't have to do the same thing over and over again. And then you just take auto groups, come here, Again, we'll just go to brush, auto mask, topological with the move brush. And then what we can do is actually take our move brush and push down and lift up the things that we that we just want to change or hide. Really push that underneath. Push that underneath as well, like such. Move that one there. There we go. Boom. Not too bad. Silent Princess. And we'll just end up cleaning that up a little bit. Let's go ahead and just kind of scale it down. There we go. And that gives, that gives us the look that we want. Let's go ahead and save it. And now we can go ahead and make the... The Korok. Yeah, then Fiber Mesh. Yep. Please tell me. So, the Vegeta figure. So, let's say I wanted to make this my... This is my cam view. So, I want to make this my cam view. So, what we're going to do is actually go ahead and hit F on the keyboard. Well, actually, first things first. We're going to go ahead and actually merge visible. That's what I recommend. Start with merge visible, which creates a new sub tool. And we're going to send this home... And then you're gonna hit F on the keyboard a bunch. So that way we actually kind of frame it. And then you're gonna go up to document and you're actually gonna change the back color to black, okay? And then what you're gonna do after this point, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide my spotlight. So hit F, make sure it's centered. My Wacom tablet's being weird, okay. So once you have it centered on that subtool, you're gonna go ahead and go to preference, cam view, and then you're gonna say make cam view. And once you do that, it's now gonna go ahead and you see right up top here, I now have my silent princess facing the direction I want. Once you get this set the way you like it, which you can go back to preference, you can change the size as well if you wanted to. 150 is usually where I keep it. If you notice here on the left-hand side underneath your, your alpha and just above your material, you actually have texture. And then right here, you'll actually want to save this image out. I created a new image, so we're going to go ahead and hit export. And you're going to want to save this in your cam view folder. So if you go to your local disk, wherever that is, um, and then go to program files, and then you're gonna go to pixel logic, you're gonna wanna go to ZBrush 2021 or your current version, Z startup, and then cam view, and then you're gonna wanna save it there. Go ahead and export that. Now you couldn't see that part because I only have one monitor, so it's only capturing ZBrush at the moment. But what we can do 
is you save that there and then you come up to your preferences, your config, and make sure you store configuration, okay? Once you store your configuration, every time you load up ZBrush, now that is gonna be there. If you would like to make sure that you, uh, you wanna make sure that yeah, you do it every time. Whoops, I'm gonna go ahead and I can send you the video. I created a video on it right here. That should help you out. Awesome, you're welcome, man, no problem. Uh, let's see here. Uh, when it comes to 3D printing, what are you keeping an eye on? Topology, poly count, quads, triangles? No, none of that. The thing that I'm keeping an eye on is actually wall thickness and whether or not it's printable. So let's actually put this back. There we go. Okay. So when it comes to 3D printing, oh, here, real quick. Sorry, last thing. If you end up wanting to change your cam view to something else, just gonna back back on that for a second. Go back to cam view and hit next until you get the model that you want. I had saved Vegeta a bunch of times and then just go back up config and save. Okay, um, so, so when 3D printing, what I'm keeping an eye on is height and thickness and how parts interact with each other. If I'm gonna be keying them later, trying to make sure that there's enough space to actually create keys. The, uh, the main thing to really focus on is how thick or thin something is. Because this will be about seven inches in height, the, the concern that I have right now for this in particular is actually the printability of each and every one of these little leaves that I have going. But that being said, you know, I don't have to really solve that until the end. But um, the more you 3D print, the more you'll start understanding that most things can't be printed uh, below 0.2 millimeter for thickness, but that's really tiny. So if you want something like this, this um, like these veins, or, or not veins, vines, to be printable, then we need to establish a size and then kind of compare it to the rest and make sure that it actually will print. You also thinking about structure and shape, you know, this will need supports. So if I want something to not have supports, how this item flows will greatly depend on whether or not I'm gonna make it, uh, make it have supports. So I know I can print this base without supports and this master sword, because this is an overhang, meaning that there's nothing underneath it to support it, will need supports. So topology, don't care about. You can make it however you want. Um, really just focused on thickness and overhangs. The big, big two to focus on. Hey, what's up, Ninar? How you doing? So, love that little touch of customization. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so, no, not a problem. Yeah, luckily for us in the 3D printing world, and even in the toy world, for the most part, topology is never something that I worry about, unless uh, unless I'm specifically asked to. Um, if I do a project that I know is going to be a toy, but then the client says, hey, we're going to want to animate this, then for sure, I'm going to have to consider retopology down the line. But for the physical product, that's going to be then cut and sliced and then sent to production. I don't care about topology in any way, shape, or form. It's just not, it's, it's not something that I need to lose sleep on. And that's the beauty part about working in toys specifically is that at the end of the day, we don't really ever need to leave ZBrush to, to do most of what we do. I mean, of course, depending on the company you work for, you know, but yeah. ZBrush is it, man. ZBrush is it. <laughs> and see here, I'm just gonna copy this bulb. Spread this out a little bit. I'm gonna repurpose this always. 
Okay, we're gonna go back to brush. I have topological turned on. Hey, what's going on, Commander? How you doing? Go. And the other thing too is um, sometimes you can get away with like hiding a little bit of detail. Um, you know, if something's gonna be so big. You know, let's say like this bulb is only gonna be, you know, like one eighth of an inch. Um, there's really not a whole lot of worry on putting in a lot of small details that the the printer may not capture. So, other little things like that. Um, let's see. What about 3D print models with textures? Will um, that will be printed in color sandstone? So. Printing textures, the golden rule is think about, plan on about 15% of all textures will be lost in the print process. So, and what I mean by that is you're going to, especially when printing in resin, resin's going to give you higher details, but when you factor in supports and sanding and cleaning up your model, um, and of course, too, there, there's always tricks to get things done a little bit cleaner. But for the most part, you'll lose about 15% of your of your detail in the print process naturally. So what you'll want to do to counteract that is make sure that you cut deeper cuts in your model, that you exaggerate some of those cuts so that when the detail gets lost, it actually turns out the way that you want it to be. Um, again, like I said, there are tricks, especially with resin printing, using some sort of dyes that will help alleviate that process. But by making your cuts deeper, by making um, your, you know, the, the look and feel of it a little bit more contrasty, that'll help you out in the long run, getting what it is, uh, getting the look and feel that you want. So just little things to kind of remember. I'm going to go ahead and hit auto gross one more time. There we go. Uh, now, what about action figures or module structures? Do you need to sculpt each part individually or break them up apart at the final step? Break them up at the final step. Uh, articulation is a... Articulation, okay, is what retoppoing is for animation. It is a process that is done after the sculpt. Um, and it can be just as tedious as manual retoppoing. The thing that you want to remember when learning to articulate or doing any type of articulation is you're going to want to um, kind of make sure that the structure and the appeal and the design of the sculpture is not um, is not just thrown away. The integrity of the sculpture needs to be preserved as much as possible. So... You know, if you look at any toy that you have um, that, you know, let's say like a Todd McFarlane Batman or something like that, um, the the integrity of how the, the toy looks, the sculpture work is preserved as much as possible. So all that gets done after the fact. Um, it's a huge process, and I'm still currently trying to develop a good way of teaching it without so much confusion because it is a lot of... It is a lot of engineering and technical uh, as well. So, but I would say that uh, Zebra Summit 2019, type in Hasbro, uh, type in Hasbro Zebra Summit in YouTube. Paul Bennett did a great job, and I link everybody there first to get the basics idea of it. But I'm personally trying to create a course that will talk about articulation. And there's so much to cover that it's taking a very long time uh, to do that. But I do want to run articulation through one of my streams. But it's very tedious and can be very boring. So, you know, something to kind of consider. But yeah, I equate re articulation. It's it's retoppling for toys. It's insane. It's amazing. Um but it's tedious. <laughs> Coffee has me doing well for the moment. Absolutely. Yeah. 
and I will say this, um, anybody who's articulated before in their, in their life will know that articulation is, is generally custom. You can create brushes and key cuts to make it easier on yourself, but it's not a one size fits all approach. So just something to kind of consider. Yeah, that video is great. That video even helps me from time to time. Like, Paul Bennett is amazing. All right, so I'm kind of looking up my Korok reference real quick because I have an idea how I want to do it. And working with one monitor is really, like, funky. Okay. I think I want to do kind of like a curvy little... A curvy little fat... <laughs> Korok. I think it'll be adorable to do it, so... So let's go ahead and block him out. So let's insert a sphere. And let's drop this all the way down at the bottom. And then let's go ahead and hit Control F and we're gonna call this the Korok. Just call him a Korok character right now. Where am I from? I am, uh, I'm from California. Yeah, I just bought a Master Chief figure to sacrifice as a study. Yeah, I have a little Batman guy from uh, Todd, uh, you know, from from uh, McFarland Toys. Uh, Twenty-two point articulation, and I have ripped him apart about five times. A key trick to ripping apart your toys, if you want to preserve them, because the material um, is either ABS or PVC um, or some sort of rubber. So if you find that the part has a lot of like flex or give, get a um, get a cup and warm it in the microwave for like um, like 30 seconds to a minute, just hot enough that you could dip your finger in, but it doesn't burn you. And then take your toy and stick them in that hot water and that heat will cause expansion and it'll loosen things up. And then you could just bloop, pop them, pop them apart. Oh, I just explained that, but uh, here's a video that links straight to my YouTube channel that actually shows how I put that Vegeta in the corner. I, I just, I literally just went over it like five minutes ago. So you can also go back uh, if you're on YouTube and watch that as well. Okay. So I'm actually going to use transparency right now. So I can keep the size of this Korok character. And I have my reference on my phone here. Kind of like just look carefully at my Korok C without bouncing back and forth. Not my Korok C, my Korok. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make the, you know, maybe I'll make the Korok poop. <laughs> it's like, just a, it's a little, you know. Hey, what's going on, Odon? Welcome in, guys. Welcome in. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Let's go ahead and start. First off, like, the the main sphere is, is usually um, a lot of topology. But, you know, if I click the polysphere, if you go to the Q and hit the polysphere... And then start scale this up. You actually get a much better sphere. So that's Gizmo. Go to the cog wheel, hit the polysphere, and it's a lot better of geometry. And now we can start manipulating this the way we want it to be. And like I said, we're gonna we're gonna make him a little a little cute and fluffy. Hey, you're from Brazil. Hello. How you doing? Welcome in from Brazil. I'm from California. Nice to have you here. Okay. And literally, like, these, these characters aren't super complicated, so I'm not going to make it super complicated. I'm going to try not to. Let me rephrase that. I'm going to try not to, but... 
you know. I've been known to overcomplicate a Kirby before. <laughs> I'm going to mirror and weld it. There we go. Turn on symmetry. And we're going to go ahead and... Let's also turn on local sim, which will scale up universally. Let's come here real quick. Okay. Now what we're going to do is turn everything off that we don't need because we have the rough size of our Korok. And I'm going to go ahead and take the clip curve. So I'm going to hold shift and control, select clip curve. And I'm just going to go ahead and literally drag right across from right to left, not left to right, because that just did that. Bloop. Greetings from Peru. Hello. Slave PR. <laughs> is this for work or for fun? Now, this is a fun project. 99.9% .9 of my uh, Pixel streams are all just fun projects. Most, Even most of my own streams. I, I rarely stream... Um, even my personal streams, I rarely stream uh, client work. Nine times out of ten, clients don't want you streaming their work. It's not something that is generally done. Although that doesn't mean you can't. I've done it before. I've had some clients that say they don't care. If you are going to uh, freelance or even if you are working with somebody, typically studios won't let you. But if you're freelancing with stuff that you have people who don't mind you, always make sure to ask before you do. Okay, let's get the shape in here like such. I'm even going to go ahead and duplicate this, roll this around. So there will be some asymmetry stuff to him, but first we're just walking out basic shapes. Give him like little horns or something. Here, let's go ahead and auto groups, mirror and weld it so the groups are the same on each side. Hey, what's up, Sir Chan? Did you continue with the Mary Jane Carnage? Um, I haven't done that yet on my no not yet i haven't continued any more on it i will be doing that soon though so generally i stream on my own on my own channels um every wednesday morning before i go to work and i work from home right now but work is keeping me busy guys <laughs> Uh, what is the best marketplace to selling 3D printing 3D printing projects in your experience? ArtStation, CD Trader, where? Honestly, okay, this is gonna sound weird. Anywhere you can sell, do it. Just make sure it's your own IP, of course. Um, but you know, I don't really want to dog on any company, so I'm not gonna say. Um, the ones I wouldn't do, but Gumroad is always a great for selling stuff. ArtStation's always good for putting your stuff out on there. Um, even mentioning um, on Instagram um, or, you know, creating a Patreon page that, like, you sell stuff through there. Um, if it cuts the middleman out at the end of the day, that usually is pretty helpful, um, especially for freelance opportunities. But, um, yeah, I, I, would, I would say... I would say those are good places to start. But even just being on Twitter and telling people, hey, you know, I have stuff for 3D printing. If anybody's interested, X, Y, and Z, you know. That's, that's a good place to mention it. Gumroad is always good, if I didn't say that already. So, yeah. Okay. We have this shape blocked out. Let's go ahead and merge these two together. It's going to rename this... Korok body and then we're going to go ahead and merge it down so we have this guy right here and then I'm going to apply dynamic subdivision so I actually have some I have three subdivisions when you don't apply you know when you hit apply it gives you three subdivisions and then I'm going to delete lower so that I have now I'm at the highest subdivision and then what we're going to do is turn off symmetry and then I'm going to turn on my gizmo, center that, 
come here, and then we did this earlier today, remesh by union, which will stitch this guy together. And then I'm going to take the clay build up this time. Go ahead, turn symmetry back on, and turn on Sculptress. And we're just going to go ahead and sculpt this, these uh, seams with um, Sculptress Pro turned on to give us a little bit more geometry. It's kind of tessellating on the fly right now. But that way these seams will be a lot better. And then we'll remesh it to be one, one smooth shape. Let's go ahead, right click army right now. I switch back and forth. Yeah, zero, yeah, remesh by union. It took me a while to get used to it. I'm a little old school. You know, sculpting a zero for five years, <laughs> you develop a lot of, you develop a lot of habits in that time. And, you know, dynameshing to weld things together is a little old school. It still works. It's still great. And I use it a lot. But I'm starting to use uh, remesh by union a lot more. Okay, now that that's good, let's go ahead and turn adapt off, turn on groups. We got symmetry turned on. And I'm actually going to go ahead and let's see, let's try two. Let's see what that does. Uh, what tablet do you recommend? Or which is the best in my in your opinion? So what I recommend any tablet. I recommend any tablet. I don't have a real preference. Wacom has a name for itself, and I'm currently on a Wacom. I have been using XP Pen for the last few years. I've tried uh, Julian once. They were okay. Um, but if you just need a tablet and you're just getting started, you know, the tablet doesn't make you a better sculptor. The tablet is only going to improve your workflow over time. So if you're just trying to get a good tablet, you know, I always recommend XP Pen. You know, get a basic $40 tablet. Uh, they'll last you a while. Had one for like two years. Works out great. Um, and then when you get more comfortable with sculpting and you want to have a better tablet experience, that's when you start looking at the higher ones. Uh, hey, Ian, I need your wisdom. How can you merge together two sub tools? I have a head with subdivision and a body with dynamesh. Is there a way to merge them without losing the details on the head? Um, there is, absolutely. So, what I recommend you do is run for the hills. No, um, let's save. Okay. What I recommend you do, actually, is utilize projection. So, let's say... Okay. I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to duplicate this guy real quick. We're going to solo him out, okay? What I'm going to do is subdivide him a few times. Yay, he's massively subdivided. And I'm going to go ahead and dynamesh him. Oh, come on. Delete lower. Dynamesh. There we go. Okay. So this is a for instance, right? He's dynameshed. Before you start merging things together, let's say we have our we have our guy right here. I recommend you use projection. Okay. So we have our guy. Yay. One second. Okay. So we have projection. What I recommend you do is you duplicate this sub tool, turn everything off but those those two sub tools. You want the one you're going to project details to at the at the bottom, the one with the details, the one on the top. So this top one right here, that's going to be your details. Your deets. Oh, my macros, I can't spell. Um, and then your bottom one is going to be your projected. Okay, the one you're going to project to. <laughs> so what we're going to do is everything's turned off, right? So we have that all turned off. We just need those things turned on. Go ahead and you're projected. The one you're going to project your details to, we're going to Z remesh those. Okay. So go ahead and 
uh, Z modeler that best you can. Do do do. Let it do its thing. Because it's easier to merge like things together. You also could, you know. So this is this is like a Dynamesh to to Z Remesh workflow, right? And then what you'll do is you'll just quickly subdivide this a couple times and then go to project. And if you have color, great, but mainly geometry needs to be turned on, hit project all. And, and there you go. Not projected, projected. Now you have your Dynamesh look on your new subdivided model. And then merge those together with uh, remesh union or Take your subdivided one, Dynamesh it at a really high Dynamesh, and then merge your Dynamesh together, Dynamesh it so it's welded, watertight, and then Z-Remesh. Using, uh, uh, using projection, it doesn't matter if my head has a slight mouth open. Um, I would be careful with that. If uh, I would open his mouth wider if you're going to Dynamesh. If he's already Dynameshed, you may want to close it. Uh, it depends. How do you avoid having weird artifacts with a projection? Um, having weird artifacts with a projection is going to come down to how clean your Z, your, your Z remeshed or your topology is. You'll get weird artifacts a lot if you try to manipulate. For example, let's go back. Okay, so if I try to manipulate this a little bit, like I Z remeshed it, then I started manipulating it, or I Z remeshed this, then came back and made changes. That's when you might get some artifacts occurring. But if an artifact occurs, try to Z try to clean up the topology, or try to try to uh, Z remesh it again till you get something that you like to project to. Um, you could do that. You could do that a lot of ways. Having uh, Different poly groups and then uh, keeping groups while Z remeshing can help you clean that up. Um, also, too, if you are, if you are, if you have an asymmetrical model and then you Z remesh but you kept symmetry on, you're going to create artifacts that way. So, if you're an asymmetrical model, you want to project from Dynamesh to to subdivision. Make sure you you Z remesh without symmetry turned on. So then, when you project the details, it knows where those details go. It used to have a lot of problems, but they've really fixed a lot of bugs within projection. But I do a, see. Would you do a custom piece, say perhaps for an album cover? I've done I've done stuff for pure two D render that gets used, not specifically an album, but always down for fun projects. Okay, great. Thanks for the help. Not a problem. Saving a morph target can also help. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nay, not a problem. Yeah, at the end of the day, if you're getting weird artifacts with projection, it will come down to your mesh and just try to get a clean mesh as much as possible. Okay, so from here, I'm actually going to turn off symmetry because now I'm going to start making this guy a little bit more asymmetrical. Don't be afraid to go asymmetrical, guys. Like, at the end of the day, you want to keep it as symmetrical as possible until you pose, but asymmetry gives it a lot of feel, a lot of love. I'm going to use the inflate brush, and I'm going to actually... Do a subtractive. Just kind of get a little bit like such. I'm gonna clip off some areas because he's a piece of wood. Bloop. We'll turn symmetry on for this part, like such. There we go. Something like that. This little guy. There we go. And of course, too, we're gonna actually apply the. Uh, subdivisions so I can start getting a little bit of detail underneath his arms 
And these characters are fun and simple, so we can have a lot of fun with the shapes. We don't have to go too crazy. Have I ever used my ZBrush models for animation? I'm actually working on a project now that is going to be for animation. I can't talk about it, um, unfortunately, yet. I can't wait to show you guys, actually. It's going to be awesome. Um, but generally, no. Generally, my stuff doesn't get animated because I work with uh, I work with toys and static st statues, mainly. So most of my stuff doesn't get animated. Uh, but this one particular project will be, and I'm so freaking stoked, like really excited. <laughs> okay. What are we making today, my kisses? Hello. We are continuing the beautiful, wonderful, so I have the Master Sword that we subtractive sculpted last week. If you guys don't remember, um, month of May, we are doing here at Pixel Logic a, a subtractive challenge. And I, I did the Master Sword, but there's a lot with it that I still need to clean up. And I tried the challenge. It was fun, torturous, but it was good. I had fun. Um, and I definitely recommend people trying it. However... Um, I want to produce a really good model. So I used it more of the sense that I conceptualized what it would look like. Now I'm going to make an entire statue around that, but uh, I'm not going to... I'm not doing subtractive. <laughs> mm. What do I use to animate with? I don't animate, so I don't do that. Um, actually, my project will be sent off to an animation team, who will do well it'll be first sent off to a rigger and then it will be sent off to um then it'll be sent off to an animation team so yeah hello brother what's happening okay now we're gonna go ahead and actually make the leaf on his face so what we're gonna do is actually use you guys are going to like this, I think. We're going to go ahead and use Mesh Extrude. Mesh Extrude is a lot of fun. Um, we're actually going to go ahead and duplicate this one because it doesn't work on subdivisions, apparently. That's that's always no good. Oop. Okay, what we're going to do now, though, you guys are going to like this little trick. If you go up to Picker... Okay, it is on continuous. Aha, it's not. Okay, so what we're gonna do is usually, let's back up for a second. Okay, so every brush within ZBrush is actually defined by this picker. And the move brush, for example, has a continuous Z orientation. So what that means is that wherever my brush goes and drags, it is going to continuously find all of the geometry that follows along the Z axis to then know what to manipulate. But if we look at picker and then hit control for our mesh extrude, it says once. So what this means is that when I drag this over and I let go, it's only gonna identify one spot wherever I started on that mesh to get that uh, information. And then the rest is just going to go ahead and kind of do whatever ZBrush wants it to do. But I actually want this to follow the shape and feel of this character. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go up to Picker, hold down Control, and hit Continue with Z. When I do this, it's now going to follow the shape of my character at all times within that Z axis. So now what I can do is I can come up here and I can drag the mask of this character like such, let go. And now it's gonna follow this shape. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of flip this up a little bit, just like such, okay? This will be that leaf on the Korok that I'm gonna love so much. This will be his mask. 
that picker is very powerful and in my opinion very underutilized and then we're going to go ahead hit sub tool and we're going to split unmasked and then we're going to go ahead and delete the korok body we don't need and now we have this shape here that will fit on his body and then we'll clean this up Oh, I missed a lot. Sorry. Subtract the sculpting sound like a pain. It's, it really was. Yeah. What is subtractive sculpting? Uh, the subtractive uh, challenge is make a sh make take the shape of like a cube, a square, a cube, a square, a cube, a sphere, um, and then you can only negatively sculpt. Um, but it doesn't act the same way in ZBrush as it would in real life. You know, like if you take if you take like a, a block of wood and start carving it's like traditional carving or, or whittling so um and i did the best i could but now i just want to make something awesome <laughs> oh let's see here oh so you don't use your own program you just make the sculpture yes i am just the, i'm the digital sculptor correct uh would you be able to create an animated version of a person for like an album cover an estimated price uh ajd if you would like to Pick my brain further on that feel free to reach out to one of my socials like dm me on twitter or something i'm pretty busy right now but you can definitely reach out and uh i can we can negotiate prices and stuff like that if you're interested um let me go ahead and send you my link tree boop, boop, boop. there you go Yeah, thank you, Ninar. Um, let's see here. Is it possible to become good at 3D artist uh, by learning itself without school or whatever? Yes. Yes, DJ. Absolutely. I am a self-taught artist. I did not go to college. Um, I do have 2D background artistry um, that I did in high school <laughs> when I did study animation. Um, however, uh, I am... I am definitely a self-taught artist uh, on, in the 3D world. So you don't need a degree to be good at 3D art, but seeking knowledge is key. If that makes any sense. I'm gonna go ahead and create the stem. Actually, actually for the stem, you know what I'm gonna do? I don't need I don't need that anymore. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and kind of mask this section out right here. Click that. And I'm just going to literally pull this out. Just like such. And I'm gonna now dynamesh it. And then let's let's click curve like that. Let's see, is there any way to invert the zoom direction in ZBrush? Invert the zoom direction? What do you what do you do you mean like if you're going you like pulling like pulling up to zoom in instead of down? I, I don't know, to be honest with you. I've never tried. Never consider. I just got used to dragging up and down to zoom. Up goes out, pulling in goes inward, so I've never questioned that, to be honest. I don't know if you can. I, I would recommend maybe trying to do like an Ask ZBrush or even reach, reach out to the Pixo team. Uh, you know, like the support. That might, that might do you one better on that front. Oh my goodness. Keep having this Wacom thing show up. Stop it. What is happening? Okay. I still have to customize my Wacom settings. It is... I have a lot of options happening. Okay, so let's go ahead, keep groups. I'm going to Z remesh this now. And we're going to make this looking good. Uh, I'm learning at 22 too late? No, not too late at all. I'm 38, and I started ZBrush five years ago. It's not too late. I've had previous experience in 3D before, but forgot most of it, and I didn't do much sculpting. No, it's it's not too late. 
trust me when I say it's not it's not too late at all. Okay, let's go ahead and make some eyes real quick. I think you guys are gonna I think you guys are gonna like this. You can do eyes with, you know, live boolean if you want. But we're gonna kinda make some custom eyes here. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the mask pen. Sorry, not the mask pen. I'm gonna take the mask lasso. I want it that way. Yeah, let's do that. Gonna grab that guy, invert this. So I did this last week and some of you thought it was pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and do it again. So I'm gonna make some, I'm just gonna make some holes where this guy's at, display properties and use double. Okay, and I'm gonna delete hidden. Gonna hit all poly group. Then what I'm gonna do is actually pull up the brush. I'm gonna use the curve bridge brush. And this is a really cool feature. So I'm gonna hover right in here, hold shift, drag that. Grab this edge, hold shift. Right there. That's gonna kind of weld that together. Let's actually do a better job at that. Come on. Yep, yeah, it's gonna be a Korok. There we go. So now we just made these holes right here. Now we can go ahead and Dynamesh this. Oh, you did that, did you? Okay. Let's see if we close holes, what happens? Ah, that's what happened. Okay. Let's back this up for a second. Grab that guy. It's better to do this here on this side. Just want to make sure there's no holes like that. Sometimes that happens. Okay, if that happens and you're fighting the geometry, go ahead and put this back. And then we're actually going to go ahead and use deformation. And we're going to go ahead and polish groups to get a cleaner selection. Let's turn on double one more time. And then let's delete hidden. Now let's try that one more time. There we go. Oh, it is not liking me today. Great. I go to show it off. <laughs> okay, okay. I see what you were doing. Let's go here. Let's try something. Geometry. See, remesh, keep groups. Let's do something. It's a super useful trick. Yeah. <laughs> Except for it doesn't want to do exactly what I want it to do right now. So we're, we're going to make it do what I want it to do. We're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna Oh here's another thing we can do actually. You guys ready for this? So we can go to Dynamesh, keep let's turn on groups, turn blur off, resolution at like five hundred. Watch this. Okay, maybe maybe one thousand. That's fine. And actually let's let's grab this guy right here. Let's make this another poly group. So we have just the two. I'm gonna dynamish with groups turned on. Let's see if that does anything. Nope, it's not liking me. All right, let's try this again. Come on. That moment when, come on, there we go. Let's try this one more time. Is there any way to hand ZBrush speed with GPU? Not that I am aware of. There we go. Maybe? No. Okay. You know what? It's because... I think because my symmetry is throwing me off because it's asymmetrical. 
So let's try this with one hole at a time. Wow, it just doesn't like me here. So bizarre. Okay, let's try one more thing. Let's really clean this up. Sometimes it's all about how well your everything's clean. So let's smooth groups. And let's really like let's like smooth it by hand. Because it is really fighting me, but I'm determined to make it work because I'm stubborn and I showed this trick before and it is real useful when it works. <laughs> so we're going to make it work. There we go. I'm going to do this. Any advice where to find a good mentor for sculpting? I'm already watching tutorials. Honestly, a good mentorship. Um, I know a few people. Uh, so. At the top of my tongue, Spicer has a great mentorship program. And if you're in my Discord, then you can get a little bit of a deal joining his. He has a great mentorship program going on. Um, I don't have one at this time, but I'd be happy to help out any way, shape, or form. If you also join my Discord, which I'll send you a link, you know, you can always ask direct questions and I'll answer them as soon as I can. It's more of a community. So there's a lot of artists in my Discord. But Anna Carolina, she's also, so both Spicer and Anna Carolina are also, uh, they are also Pixel streamers and they have great mentorship programs. And then Shane Olson, who is my teacher, um, has a great 3D character workshop. I don't know how many here is from 3D Character Workshop. Shout out if uh, if you are. But uh, those three have some of the best, best mentorships that I definitely recommend. So yeah, oh, just uh, on that link tree, scroll all the way down to the bottom and that should get you where it's at. Um, yeah, it's a great course. It, yeah, it's amazing. Okay, uh, I need to turn double on. But those th those are great courses. Highly, highly recommend. Come on. Okay, if this doesn't work, then then we'll just do it. We'll do it the other way. You know. Sometimes. Okay, yeah, this is just fighting me. All right, if something is fighting you, you would be, you know, don't, don't, don't stress. If something's not working, let's just do it the other way. Which is totally fine. When in doubt, move on. That's probably the biggest thing I can recommend. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and actually insert a couple cylinders. We'll give them some round, uh, just circular eyes. But it's a mask, so we'll just go ahead and we'll use some live boolean because that's actually easier too. But if you need to create holes, that's one way you could do it when it works. You know, this walk a menu, I need to turn this off. It keeps popping up. You guys can't see it, but it's there. I can attest Anna Carolina's and Spicer's for sure. They are awesome. But yeah, if you're in my Discord and you show up, you know, uh, if you're in my Discord, I have a 25% off for Spicer's course. If you guys are looking to join his course, and that's off of his his direct mentorship or even just his on-demand. Um, so pop in there. If you are interested in that stuff. But definitely, uh, it, yeah, it is all great. Both are, both are amazing. Well, all three, because Shane's awesome too, so... There we go. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and subdivide this a few times. I'm going to go to subtract and turn on live boolean. And then we're going to put this underneath. Add this arrow. There we go. At the end of the day, we just need to... We just need to make it work. And then we're actually going to use... 
this mask lasso to get the mouth going. We're going to cut the mouth up as well. Try and tighten this up like this. Solo for a second. We're going to clean this up. Clean the back off. We need use the mask lasso. It goes all the way through. Now we're going to kind of redefine this a little bit. Let's turn on Lazy Mouse. And we're going to paint the mask a little bit cleaner. Yeah, live bullying is really overpowered. And it's really awesome. What I love about ZBrush is that there's like 100 ways to do the exact same thing. And none of it is wrong. As long as your message looks nice and clean and that you are, you know, really just like pushing something and getting the results you want. At the end of the day, yeah, as long as you get the results, that's all that really matters. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. And then we're going to go ahead and go to extract. And we're going to, again, turn the thickness to zero so we get a single-sided surface. Hit accept. This is what we got. I like to clear that mask. Let's do the same thing, masking to borders only. Although it is creased, so what we could do is do just crease. Mask by feature, invert that, soften it a little bit. Go to deformation, polish by features. And I'll just kind of clean that up a little bit. And see here, the crease is being a little funky. So let's go back and do borders. Which is what I think works better in this instance. There we go. It's a nice cleaner. Something like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and keep creases. And we're going to Z remesh it like a 5. Eh, maybe like a 2. There we go. A little bit better. And then we're going to go ahead and use Z modeler. Hover over a face. All poly groups, we're just gonna Q mesh this out. For the cut, it doesn't matter, so I'm gonna go pretty far. And then we're just gonna push this in like such. Sub tool, make that subtractive. That's not going all the way through, so we need to make sure that that goes all the way through. So what we can do is isolate it and hit Y to get the transpose, alt tap. There we go. What's happening? I only started in ZBrush in December, and the amount of improvement... Or, yeah, improvement I've seen is fantastic. Yeah, it's truly wonderful. Okay. Yeah, that's being a little weird, isn't it? So let's actually go a little bit more. Such... Ooh, that's it's going in some weird direction. I think I hit something on my tablet. And now it's giving me all sorts of funkiness. <laughs> there we go. That's going to pop through like that. There we go. Yay! Perfect. Now we can use live boolean on the mass front. Like such. Actually, we can hide this real quick. Come up to... Actually, before we do any of that, let's make sure there's subdivisions on this guy. That's good. That's good. Okay. So with what we have visible, let's actually go with Boolean folder. And that will give us this mask. 
And then we can actually put this back in the folder. We can turn everything on. Let's turn off what we don't want anymore. So we don't want the mask that's cut. We'll just save that. And now we have this guy right here. Save as. Doesn't hurt to save what you got going. And then I do want to Z remesh this. So I'm actually going to go ahead and hit group by normals. So if we go to polygroups, group by normals, it's going to kind of make sure that whatever is at least 45 degrees or sharper, it will be a different polygroup. And then we're going to go ahead and keep groups. We can even do a crease by Paul Gabry. So we can go to geometry, crease, crease polygroups. And then we can keep creases. They'll just help Z remesher guide a bit more. And then we'll go ahead and let's try five. And we'll Z remesh the mass so it's a little bit cleaner and a little bit more spicier. Yeah, no problem, DJ. Absolutely. Yeah. So now we have some decent topology to work with. And then when we hit, you know, subdivision. We have a low 5,000 poly group, and then we have this mask as well. And we can start detailing it when we need to. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save as a new sub tool. Awesome. Yeah, I love live boolean. Easy to tweak, whole shape, so exactly. Yep. When in doubt, live it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I like showing that. Uh, I do like showing that that curved bridge. It is very functional, but it was not liking me today. So we moved on, right? Okay. Now what we're going to do is let's actually pose them. So let's turn everything on because I actually want to pose him before I sculpt him. So we're going to go ahead and save. I know I did that already, but I save a lot. Okay. Now this is 3.4 million polys right now because this sword is dynameshed. So we're gonna make sure that he's pretty low. Perfect. We don't need the silent princess on right now. Only show what you need when posing. It's very important because at the end of the day, you know, the more you try to utilize T, uh, T pose mesh to get things looking good, um, the problem that you'll notice is that the, the denser the file becomes because it kind of merges everything together, the harder it is for your computer to work. So, only show what you need to show. I only need the base and the sword to do this pose. So we're gonna go to transpose master and T pose mesh. Real time printing at the end. Oh, that'd be so awesome, right? All right. Real time printing, we'd be here all night. <laughs> okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do, 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 do. Actually want this guy to be peeking out behind the Master Sword. Let's get him a little close. Now this is, okay, so this is the fun part. Okay, so I have to decide right now in a sense, or at least keep in mind, maybe not fully decide, but I have to keep in mind exactly how I want to proceed with the printing process. And I actually wouldn't mind printing this character attached to the sword. So the sword in this character would literally just be this piece that then has a key that slides into the actual base. So that being said, I don't mind a little bit of interaction between the sword and him. Got 
going to kind of push him in a little bit because the sword will have a little bit of a squish going on his belly. What I'm going to do is select just this guy. I'm going to isolate. Actually, let's wipe this here. Let's grab this. I'm going to isolate just this part of his arm. And we're going to go ahead and kind of start pivoting this so that he's holding on to it. Actually, what we will do, let's actually up this soften let's soften that mass just a little bit do i print my own figures or do you contract out to do a service um i actually contract out if it goes beyond 3d printing if i actually do any freelance work with clients that need it 3d printing I'll print them one, but generally the printing process happens outside or after the fact. But generally, this the company that I've worked for, the freelance stuff, they do their own. They do their own uh, manufacturing. Okay, I'm going to relax, smooth him just a bit. Isolate this guy. There we go. So his arm's kind of on it, like such. And then we're going to go ahead and isolate this. Like that. Soften that up. Hi, Link. Hey, buddy. Come get it. Uh, to bridge the holes like you tried before with the curve brush, you could try Z modeling edge and bridge instead next time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that is another method of doing it for sure. Especially when uh, Bridge Curve tries to talk back to you the way it's talking back to me today. <laughs> you know, it's like when you take your car to the mechanic and you're like, I have this this ringing that happens, you know, this, this tick, 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 tick. And every time I drive, it's like grinding and smacking and the mechanic turns in there and turns the car on. He's like, hey, I don't, I don't hear it. Car sounds great. Yeah, yeah, except for it's the opposite. I'm like telling you, yeah, yeah, it works great, guys. It's so beautiful. And then... <laughs> you know. As it, as it tends to do. There we go. Okay, kind of smooth at it right there. There we go. Oops, so we're gonna go ahead and isolate just the body here for a second. I'm not gonna worry about any details in the in it right now. I'm just gonna make sure that the blade of the Master Sword stays straight. That stays true. But that's him right there. There we go. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go back and send T-Pose. All right. Let's get something to drink. There you go. It's posed. Perfect. There he is. Let's go ahead and save. Yay. 
Yay, there it is. Okay, great. Now let's start working on a little bit more of uh, Master Sword detail. Okay, cool. I'm actually going to... Realize there's this piece of a blade right here. We don't need this. I am thinking about keeping this one piece the way we had it, so let's go ahead and grab that. Let's go ahead and delete hit and close holes. Trim dynamic. Nope. B T E D for trim dynamic. Start cleaning this up a little bit. Start detailing this sword just a little bit more. But we're going to also add some elements and stuff to it. So, you know, so we will be using clay buildup and stuff. But I kind of like what we did here. So we'll use a little bit more of like old school Z brushing. We'll like put some clay buildup and then we'll do like some uh, H polish or or whatnot just to get keep it that kind of statue-esque feel i'm also gonna weather this blade a lot okay let's turn on back face mask back face mask with polish will actually make sure that you don't push too far beyond a certain point and it'll help you keep some sharp edges and then we'll use the pinch brush to kind of refine a few things and then we'll use damn standard as well to get some cuts happening So we'll do that. Now I have uh, symmetry turned on both, uh, I believe it's Y and, and X. No, X and Z. So that way I can work on both sides of the blade at the exact same time, not do twice the work. Didn't know about back face polish. I've been trying to do that by eye. <laughs> Not a problem, yeah. And you can actually, too, if you come up to brush and you come up to depth, you can actually uh, play with this. Not only with the, you know, with embedding, but if you, you can actually turn depth mask on. And you can actually control its fall off on that back face. So that depth can really give you some nice, uh, so you can really get some control with that feature right there. So if we go back to the H polish, for example, turn this on, you can see back face is already, this is already pretty flat here, but we can make that even more so. So it really concaves. So then you can get a much bigger brush and you can see it's not wanting to hit that edge so you can come in and really clean that up, really push it. So back face combined with brush depth and push that and you get some really cool stuff. And if you find something that you like, then you can actually take this and then save that brush out as uh, your own custom H polish brush and I'll have all those settings set in there for you next time. So, yeah, some really cool stuff. Awesome. Yeah, no problem. Oops.
Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of hold Alt. I'm using the lazy mouse by holding Shift and letting go to create some more sharper edges. I'm actually gonna take the move brush and kind of manipulate this geometry. I could probably just, you know what, I should probably just create, I think I'm just going to create my own gemstone. I think I'm going to, can't speak. I think I'm just going to create my own gem there. I don't know if I want to keep manipulating this. I think I might just like cut that out and fix it. Before we do that, let's just kind of focus on everything else. Okay, the lazy mouse, let's turn that up. Let's get a little bit cleaner of an edge. Like such. There we go. So I'm using the damn standard to create some of these edges like that. Perfect. It's looking pretty good. Let's actually use the damn standard a little bit, kind of trim that off. I'm going to put my glove on. Actually, my wrist is starting to bother me a little bit. Cut that gym out. Put your own in. Game over. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I failed this attractive challenge. I'll be the first to admit, guys. I did my best. I tried. Just, you know. It got me what I need, but now we're going to make it look as awesome as possible, so. It's okay. It's okay, guys. It has to be okay. I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be, right? <laughs> okay. All right, this is where it gets really fun. So when you're trying to create a really nice clean line when you're sculpting, try to place the model where your more your most comfortable stroke is. It'll really help out. If you get a really nice clean line, like let's say you like, yes, this line right here is beautiful. Hit one. Repeat that if you need to do it again. <laughs> it really is just helpful. There we go. Hit one again. Because sometimes it's hard to chase that line. You know? Whatever. That's intense challenge. Yeah, it really is. Hey, thanks, Tom Riddle. Lovely name, by the way. You did awesome for subtract sculpting. Definitely reads nice, man. Thanks. Mind blowing the whole scene real quick. Oh, wait. Mind showing the whole scene real quick? Yeah, not at all. Here it is. That's what we got going so far. My Japanese has stalled and that's <laughs> don't worry my I know a handful of Japanese and it's not much <laughs> I've honestly put my studies on my studies on hold a little bit because I've been really busy working and 
time, man. Time is everything. But I figure it's going to be a life journey for me, so I'll get there when I get there. I'll finish it when I finish it. Quark is awesome. Nice stuff. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's... Yeah, last week we did subtractive sculpting. And this week I'm cleaning it up my way. <laughs> and because, yeah, I don't think I can finish it. What's in my mind and how I want to finish it? Definitely two very different things. But the challenge was amazing. And I'm so glad I gave it a shot, you know? But at the end of the day, too, like, you know. What I think I'm going to use subtractive sculpting for uh, moving forward is actually, and I think this would be really good, if I want to conceptualize a thought real quick, kind of like how, you know, sometimes, you know, an artist will just quickly sketch, but that sketch is going to be repurposed and redrawn multiple times. It's not going to be the final piece. Like, they're going to have to do it again and again. Um... It's going to be kind of the same thing where like, you know what? I'm going to use it to maybe start concepting and sketching some ideas and then refine that, that sketch. Um, it's kind of been a nice little study practice for doing like, uh, I would say quick or, um, you know, just like one off ideas that you just kind of want to see, see through. So, I don't know if that makes any sense, but it, it's definitely, it was definitely a lot of fun to give it a shot. Okay, I'm actually going to use the Move Infinite brush again, so that I can kind of just squeeze this handle and taper it. Because, again, I'm not actually changing too much the overall shape. I just want it a little thinner. Yeah, that's better. That, that reads so much cleaner. Yeah, but I want it. I want it to be fluent and at least. Yeah, no, I do too. I I agree with you. No point in learning a language if uh, you're not going to be able to use it. For me, it's just time. And what's funny too is like you know, anime Japanese is very different than actual Japanese. You know, like day-to-day -day, real life Japanese is very different than than anime Japanese. So, you know, while it'll help you understand anime, it definitely um it's a different experience talking to somebody in Japanese versus listening, you know, because there's acting and stuff like that. Like it's a little bit of a different world. Just like voice acting in American or in English, you know. Nobody really talks or speaks that way. <laughs> okay, I'm going to mask this off so I don't ruin it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, nobody really speaks that way. So it's, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny to think about it. Uh, good idea. Force you to think differently. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of the idea. I'm getting more and more into con concept sculpting. Um, and it's definitely, it's definitely helpful. Okay. Okay. So now I'm just kind of trying to finalize some of the little bits that separates the handle from the blade there we go okay let's start cleaning some of this up here this looks pretty gross this is one of those things i was like what was i doing <laughs> you were just subtracting nope There we go. Okay. 
In real life, we rarely use proper grammar 100% of the time and full sense or full sentences, unless you're an actor or someone who gives speeches. But even then, like I've heard, you know, you've heard interviews of like actors and such that are like, um, 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 you know, yeah, just nobody speaks that way. I think what it is, is like, you know, when you're used to hearing your own language, I think you don't think of that, you know? So like when I started tr uh, trying to learn Japanese, um, which again, I'm like very, very basic. I, I think I understand more listening than anything else, but the instructor had said like, um, you know, there's also like, there's all, there's also like, um, like nobody speaks that way, but it's also like, there's like, um, I'll just call it like respect. I forget the proper term for it, but it's like, you know, the way they speak, the way they speak to their elders or to somebody who's younger or of the same stature, I guess we'll say is vastly different. I forget what the term is called, but, um, I just think I just like, I didn't think of that until somebody said it. And I was like, Oh, that makes sense. I'm just used to hearing my own language. So I don't think about like, Oh, that's how that would be. But I wish I had more time to study language. I definitely, definitely love it. But yeah. Uh, so are we talking about real Japanese versus anime Japanese? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Formal. Yeah. Um, I wish sure. I'll, I'll think of it here in a second. I'm sure. But yeah, it's just like in the way that you would like the way you would speak to your brother is not how you would speak to your father is not how you speak to a teacher. Um, so there's so there's different uh, approaches to it. Yes, Kigo. Thank you. Kigo. Yes, that is that is it. Yay. But what's funny is when I listen to anime now, I pick up on more things. So I just need to practice speaking it with somebody. All right, so we're just using that H polish and we're actually just coming here and smoothing stuff out. Bloop. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, go. Yeah. So, and, and so in that explanation, like in anime, they don't normally use proper Kago. They normally just have a script that they follow. You know, it's just something. So it's not, it doesn't always follow standard, uh, st standard structure was, that was my point. Yeah. There's Kago, there's non Kago. And then there's something that I don't know. That's the name of this like super Kago. Yeah. Which is like extreme formal. And so like you would talk to your classmates, like your respective um, equals in non kego You could just, even like your brother, you could just be like, eh, you know, like whatever, dude. But then, um, but then, you know, when your parents enter a room, it's, it's definitely like has to be kego, which is respectful. And then your grandparents would be even more, <laughs> would be like the next level. Yeah. So see, yeah, learning a bunch. All right, I'm just cleaning this up a little bit more. I'm gonna use some clay buildup. I'm actually gonna soften it and low intensity and kind of just like fill in some of these imperfections. Watch this be the sculpt off challenge this year. I hope they do a sculpt off challenge. Did anybody participate in the sculpt off challenge last year? Curious what you guys thought of that. I was I participated last year and I loved it. Yeah, exactly. Use Kego for your for older for boss for Yeah. It's like you wouldn't walk into your boss's office and be like, what up, dude? I mean, maybe, you, <laughs> I guess it depends on your job, but I personally wouldn't walk into my boss's office and be like, hey, dude, I was, 
how's it going bro like yeah it's it's that instance like you know what's the happy hat brother and if you can that's awesome <laughs> Okay, let's use the pinch brush now. So you see here where like it gets a little gets a little tight right there. So I'm actually gonna use the move brush, turn back face mask on, and we're just gonna pull that out a little bit. Maybe in the future when GKs become bosses. <laughs> That's hard to talk. Yeah. That's the thing over your trash talk light. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. And you never know. Maybe one day we'll get there. <laughs> All right. Uh, I haven't used ZBrush until this year, and I really want to participate in the Sculpt Off at the ZBrush Summit. Hope it's an in-person event. Yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that... Yeah. I'm hopeful. I mean, I'm in California, and that's usually where it's held, and I can't speak directly of what Pixo is going to do, but I can say that um, I do miss the in-person, and... It'll definitely be nice when we can get back to that point. There we go. Back that up. Let's actually tighten that up a little bit. Oh, wow. Hey, what's going on? I missed it. What sort, uh, what sort rules were there? Oh, so the sculpt off was... Um, you had three hours, could only use ZBrush. You had to sculpt a, an illustration. And the theme was, um, the theme was, uh, oh my gosh. Steampunk. Yeah, that took forever. <laughs> anyway, theme was steampunk and yeah, three hours, sculpt and render. Um, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Okay, let's grab this guy here. Dude, your Vegeta orientation thingy in the corner there. Awesome. Thanks, man, so much. Yeah, there's actually, um, if you're curious on how to manipulate the cam view, um, I actually have a tutorial on that. If you go to my uh, YouTube. Yeah, that was one of my favorite sculpts. Uh, I've been UV unwrapping for hours now. Do I have to unwrap my sub tools to apply materials and marmoset? Appreciate it. Yes, if you want to utilize the full potential, UVs will help you a lot. Um, what are you? Are you just having problems? Or are you just hit? Are you just trying to like UV unwrap as as much as possible? But yes, um, it's beneficial to have uvs when you try to take it in something like uh something like marmoset but you don't have to if you're just trying to render and you're bringing over poly paint you don't have to but it can't hurt you know it's that it's that situation right okay now what we're gonna do is actually start creating some of this bevel Okay, so actually, I'm gonna take the trim dynamic. Let's actually mask off this section right. Oh, interesting. Okay, hold on. Let's try to get this a little bit better. Uh, straight right there, perfect. That's a little bit cleaner. All right, let's mask that. So what I'm gonna do is actually take the trim dynamic. That's not the trim dynamic, that's the move brush. There we go.
Okay. Let's turn lazy mouse on so I can really get a clean... As much as I can, actually. Let's... Okay, let's go sideways here real quick. Come on. I go a little bit stronger on the intensity. Now this sword will be damaged, so I'm not going to go for perfect, but we're going to go for close to perfect, hopefully. Let's actually take the damn standard now. Go. There we go. Something like such. Uh, let's see. Um, is the perpetual license worth it in Marmoset? Um, we'll keep the topic a little bit more towards Pixel Logic because this is a Pixel Logic stream. But I would say, on all softwares, my opinion is if you can buy a perpetual license, it's always worth it. Um, I'm not a big fan of subscription base, but yes, if you can, I recommend it. No, 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 you're totally fine. Totally fine. Um, about that, I use multiple software sets. So when optimizing for game assets and creating UVs, I use, use Maya. No, you're fine. Um, then bring those UVs into Painter or Marmo. Would you say that the process is more efficient in ZBrush alone? Um, so I mainly do toys, but I do know the video game pipeline fairly well and I would say that you're on the money um, you could do a lot in ZBrush I've retopoed in ZBrush it's possible you can do it is it efficient uh, that I can't really speak to that so much but if you only had ZBrush could you do it yeah I, I, I don't know that's a hard one ZBrush can do a lot uh, you can retopo in ZBrush you definitely can uh, bake maps or not bake maps you can I mean you can export maps using the multi map map exporter more normal map cavity ambient inclusion blah 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 um, then probably bring into something like unreal but ZBrush is definitely one step of the process obviously to get a game in its optimal performance you're going to want to utilize more software but yeah um Yeah, that's that's my thought on it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. In terms of time also, not just poly counts and stuff. I mean, look, you, you know, you can get a sculpt out really fast. Uh, depending on your skill level in ZBrush, faster than you could most program. I, I don't think there's a program out there that really competes with the efficiency of like how fast you can get something done. And poly counts do play a, a big role in what can be done as far as efficiency goes. Um, the faster you can get something done is obviously gonna benefit it, benefit you more. But, uh, but at the end of the day, ZBrush is a step in that process. And I don't think there's a company out there that solely uses ZBrush nor, so yeah, you know, so. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, I can't believe how fast it has been at about a year. Nice. Yeah. I I can say this 100%. Zebra, what ZBrush has done is they had made it they're making it harder and harder to leave ZBrush, you know. Once I learned Z uh the Z model brush for example, I stopped taking my stuff outside to do box modeling or to do you know uh, simple processes like that even even creating UV seams and stuff 
you can do fairly efficiently in ZBrush. It's just how meticulous do you want to make it? You know, how much time do you have that you want to invest into it? And then of course too, if you're working with a company, companies always have processes and their own pipeline that generally you'll stick with. So at the end of the day, you know, it's just a step in the process. But like for what I do, for example, uh, with mainly making toys, I don't ever have to leave ZBrush. I consider myself to be a lucky, <laughs> lucky in that sense, where nine times out of 10, the job will keep me in ZBrush because I can do it all in here and get it ready for production, even scaling, getting proper measurements, all that stuff can be done very, very well and efficient and ZBrush. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, what we're gonna do is actually take the, we're gonna take the H polish now and I'm gonna try my best to get this nice and straight and polished up. It's looking pretty good. Still got that, you know, still has that kind of hand sculpted feel a little bit because of the subtractive challenge we did uh, just last week. But I don't think I actually want to deviate from that. This this project has been super fun. I will be making my own gym, though, and also some of my own bands here in a second. How much time do we have? Oh, it's eight o'clock. Wow, that that's fast. <laughs> All right. So this is what we have so far, guys. All right, let's go ahead and save it. It's taking forever. Cool. All right, guys, does anybody have any final questions? Because it is 8 o'clock. Um, fast three hours. I super enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this, uh, this project. It's been a lot of fun. We're going to continue it next week. I like having projects that take me a few weeks to get it done. So... Yeah, I hear you where the company product, uh, production pipelines are concerned. Not all studios are the same. It totally makes sense. Absolutely, yeah. What I definitely recommend when coming to learn game pipelines or even perfect your own gaming pipelines, definitely just take a look at what other artists are doing. Um, take a look at what studios do. Studios are pretty open with some of the stuff that they use. So, you know, if you know they're using Unreal Engine, for example, you know, stuff like that, you can, you can pretty much assess a certain pipeline. So... But yeah, no problem. Have a great night, guys, everybody. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed your weekend too. Hopefully the weekend was good. If you guys made it this far and you're after you're watching after the stream you made it this far, or if you're sitting here right now and you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button so that you know when Pixo goes live. Uh, ZTL or ZPR, I'm having problems opening ZPR files. So just remember Zerchan, ZPR files are project files and they're massively stupid big. <laughs> <laughs> They're so big. Uh, just be careful. But ZTL is how I generally save, and I save in steps. I'll save multiple ZTLs throughout my progress. Love your style and your pro uh, your process. Thank you for showing it. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for being here and hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. I love teaching ZBrush. I love just teaching art in general. So definitely it's fun to come here and hang out with you every single week. So again, if you would like to follow me, and my socials and stuff like that, please drop me a follow. Jump into my uh, my Discord, which is more of a community. It's just more of a place for artists to come hang out. Um, I would love to see you there. You can share your work. You can ask questions. There are tons of artists there. And again, don't forget to subscribe, follow, hit all that good stuff. And if you're watching this afterwards, comment your comments down below. And if you have questions, somebody will gladly answer them, most likely from Pistol Logic, or if I happen to run across it, I'll try to answer as well. All right, guys, again, thank you. You guys take care, and I'll catch you all next Sunday. Or if you want to join me on my streams, uh, Wednesday morning, typically, 7 a.m. So, all right, guys, that is it. Later. Bye.